Hello, uh, this is Greg Braille from Sonoa Systems. Uh, this is, I think, our third video we've done today from our offices in Santa Clara, California. We're talking about APIs. And right now we want to talk about API security. Um, you're, again, you're going to be putting a bunch of your, your key corporate functionality out on the internet. You're going to be exposing it to anyone who can sign up for your API. How do you keep the bad guys from using your API too much? How do you keep make sure that the the good guys get good performance. We'll talk more about traffic management and scalability another time. But let's focus on security. Now, security is obviously a huge, uh, a huge topic. Um, if I'm not careful, a security architect will come in and tell me I haven't talked about enough things. So here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about encryption, authentication, authorization, all that kind of stuff. So let's start with the very beginning. Um, this is a bit of a pet peeve of mine, but I think that SSL, encryption, is the foundation to security for almost any kind of API scheme. If you're going to be sending usernames and passwords to your API, if you're going to be using something like OAuth, which requires that there's some secret data, you know, some of these things like OAuth has protection against eavesdropping, but really, SSL isn't so bad. Um, if you use, you know, some modern technology in front of your API, even if you use a reasonably decent app server, SSL is not such a huge performance problem. If your API's got important data on it, if the passwords that people are using for your API are important, really think about SSL. But enough with that. Once you're going to put your API out there, you're going to want to authenticate people to your API. And how you do it depends upon, upon what your API does. One thing that's tremendously popular is the idea of an API key. An API key is a simple identifier, you know, a unique identifier, basically a long string of letters and numbers that identifies a user. The idea of an API key is that you use it in an API where you need to identify your users, but it's not necessarily used for true authentication. You'll make sure that only people with API keys access your API, but you know, if the API key gets in the wrong hands, it's not a bad thing. So if what your API does is something like, you know, the example I always use is some of the Google, the uh, Yahoo and Google Maps APIs. They have API keys on them. They use the API key for rate limiting and traffic management, talk about that too later. They use the API key uh, just to identify who users are, but they're not dealing with money or anything. On the other hand, let's imagine that you're Twitter, or let's imagine that you're you know, uh, JP Morgan Chase Bank, and you have an API, and your people are going to be using your APIs to send and receive money. Then you better at least have some sort of username password authentication scheme. You better make sure that on the back end you manage your passwords using all the good enterprise security standards you have. Make sure you don't have any unencrypted passwords on disk. Make sure that you manage them very carefully. Your password reset mechanisms are reasonable. Um, you know, you don't set it up so that you know, everybody in the world tells you their cat's name, so all you have to do is find someone with a cat named Spot and uh, you can get their password. Um, and you better be using SSL to make sure that password is encrypted. Then there's also OAuth. OAuth is a, is a new security standard that's all the rage and the, the hip cool APIs like Twitter out there. OAuth is tremendously important when you need to have your API be accessed by other programs and other APIs. Um, it kind of came about between, say, Flickr and Facebook, I think, or something like that. Um, and now I'm getting it wrong and someone's going to make fun of me. But the idea is um, you need API X, wants to talk to API Y. OAuth is great for that. You know, OAuth is what allows you to give another application access to your Twitter uh, stream without requiring that you give that application your actual Twitter password. And we can talk more about that in another time, but that's a real important standard and one we're going to see a lot. But it's not the only solution. If you look at the way Twitter works, um, when people use Twitter directly, they use a username and password. When they turn Twitter over to the, the turn, the, when they turn the keys over to Twitter, to another program or another API, they use OAuth. Uh, we can talk about authorization, but it's a huge topic. The basic idea of authorization is how do you make sure that once you've identified the user, that they're allowed to do the thing in the API you're letting them do. Another important one is audit. Do you know not only who's using your API, but do you have some sort of record? It depends on what your API is for, but even if it's a very simple API that gives that information, you probably want to have some sort of record of who called your API you know, you got to be careful about, you know, writing down their password and that sort of thing. But you want to know who called it, who did it, what kind of result you gave them, what, you know, whether it was a success or a failure. And when your API is used for something that's really important, like money, it's probably good to actually have a verified audit trail, maybe even in a database, that tells
tells you every single thing your API did. And the last thing to think about is threats. Uh, one of the things that Sonoa does very well is things is XML processing. So we worry about things like XML threat detection. If your API accepts XML as input, is someone going to try and send some carefully constructed XML designed to crash your XML parser? Or are they going to put in some SQL injection? Or even if it's a, a REST style API, are they going to try to put in a query parameter that's you know, a thousand miles long to try and blow up your stack? Um, you should be thinking about these things in your API because you're not just building this for your friends. You're building this that's going to go out on the internet. Anyone in the world can use it. So here's a long set of things to think about with security. We're going to be talking more about them later, but actually right after this we're going to get off and we're going to make another video and we're going to talk a little bit instead about traffic.